Hello everyone. Cutscenes are an essential part in making games. A cutscene is a non-interactive sequence in a video game that interrupts gameplay for the sake of setting the mood of the game, introduce new mechanics to your game, and or tell stories in the game. And in this video, we'll be learning how to make this simple cutscene using Unity's timeline feature. If you do get any value out of this video, please remember to subscribe, like, and or comment down below. And now with the intro of the video out of the way, let's just start with the video. Okay, so I have this scene right here. This character has a simple player controller script and all the assets shown here are a free asset pack from itch.io. So I'm gonna create a duplicate of my current scene. Only difference is I'm gonna disable my character controller so that the player can't move while the cinematic is playing. In the top left corner, go to file, build settings, and this window will pop up. This area right here shows all the scenes in your game. Add the cutscene here. So I'm gonna be adding my cutscene before the game scene so that after this cutscene finishes, the player starts playing. All right, so going into my cutscene level, I'm gonna go to window, sequencing, and select timeline. A timeline window will pop up, create an empty game object. In my case, I'm gonna name it timeline and click on create. This will open a window asking you where to save the playable file. I'm gonna create a folder called timeline and save it there. Awesome. All right, now with all the boring stuff out of the way, let's start animating. To animate a game object, click on the plus sign and select animation track. Drag and drop this player to the animator slot. Click on the record button to record any changes. Just before we start animating, I like to change this from frames to seconds so that it shows the seconds instead of the frames. First, I'm gonna move them down a couple of units. I'm gonna go back and add the start position. And as we can see, it's animating the position change. It looks a bit bland though, so let's add sprite animation. I'm gonna double click on the animations. It'll take me to the animation window to animate the keyframes. I'm gonna add these run sprites here. Change the spacing of the frames a bit. Awesome. Now let's do the same steps, but a couple of units to the right. Do the same thing with the sprites. And now one last time upwards. So the player steps into the pit of acid and dies. And now for the death animation. Now for the death sound effect, I just downloaded this WAV file from SFXR. To add sound effects, click on the plus icon, select audio track, and add sound effects here. I'll just put it all the way to the end when the player explodes. Now there's one last option I want to show you, which is the activation track. What this does is it just keeps your game object active as long as the track is playing. And when it finishes, it disables the game object. So to add this track, click on plus, click on activation track, and add the player game object to the slot right here. Alright, so as we can see, it works. I'm just gonna remove this one because I don't really need it. Alright, so to make editing animation changes in the timeline window a bit easier, go to the timeline, right click and select convert to clip track. And now for the title effect. Alright, so to finish it off, let's add a canvas to our scene. I'm gonna set it as screen space camera and drag and drop our camera to the canvas. I'm gonna change it from constant pixel size to scale with screen size so that it scales relatively to the screen. 1920 by 1080 sounds pretty good. And I'm gonna set the match to 0.5. Awesome. Now I'm gonna add a panel. I am going to color it a darker color, maybe black. And I'm gonna keep it like this. I think it's not showing, so I'm gonna set the ordinal layer to three. Awesome, it started showing. I guess something like, okay, maybe not three, maybe like six. And add some text. I'm gonna call this title. Now go to the timeline. Let's add a animation track. Let's drag and drop this canvas as an animation track and create animator on canvas. Awesome. Now what this will do is it created this, this little animator right here. So we can animate it inside our timeline. So let's select here and let's start recording. I dragged the player group. I dragged the player and the player uh, activation track a bit to forwards just to have space for recording the panel. How about we make it expand? Let's make the text expand. Goes off panel fades out, the animation plays, it plays the uh, plays this one right here. Now for the script that takes us to the next scene. Now I created this script, 
it's called go to next scene you can call it whatever you want but it basically just takes me to the next scene all right so inside the script i have this i enumerator it basically is a function that has a timer and after the timer finishes it it executes everything below that timer so right here i am calling the next scene i enumerator i'm calling it start cool and i'm calling it next scene so at the start functions, so whenever our scene starts, it starts a timer that counts 8.3 seconds and then executes this line of code, which just takes us to the next level. And also I added using unity engine.scene management. So yeah, and that was basically it. Now let's go back to unity and preview our scene. Awesome, everything seems to be working perfectly. Now if you got any value out of this video, thank me by subscribing, commenting, and or liking. Check out this video on how I made a game in 4 days for the Brackies Game Jam, or check out this video, click here to subscribe. And without further ado, I will be seeing you in the next video. Cheers.